Welcome back to Will It Work. I'm Kevin. Today we're looking at Super TV Boy. Uh, it says it's from Systema, uh, but um, this system was, uh, there was like three of these. They came out in the 90s, these TV Boys, and uh, they're all virtually the same. They, they run on um, uh, basically battery-operated unit that played Atari 2600 games. Um, before, like, say, the flashback systems and the, um, you know, Atari joystick uh, standalone things, um, this contained, you know, 127 Atari games, uh, and it was for sale in a lot of, um, you know, smaller shops, especially in the UK and other parts of the world. Uh, where, you know, you could get this relatively inexpensively. Uh, this one is, uh, as clones go today, there's a gazillion of these things. Nobody really cares. But in terms of, you know, TV Boy, when it came out, and because it was sold in the UK and everything, it had a bit more of a, um, uh, a following, let's say, since there was like three of them. And, uh, yeah, there's even a Wikipedia all about TV Boy, etc. So it was something a little bit more, it made a little bit more of a statement. Uh, this is the UK version. Uh, the, for some reason, the game Defender, Protector or something was removed from the UK version. They put in this Mountain Man game for some, some reason. I don't know why one game was removed and they put in a different one. Maybe they had some problems with that game or something. I don't know. So um, looking at the box, and we are going to try this one out. Um, but just looking at the box here, it's a little bit rough, but, you know, you can see the Super TV Boy. Um, it, you know, it takes uh, controllers, and uh, it's like a standalone unit that uh, does plug in, and um, that's plug and play. Now, I'm not sure, since this is a UK unit, I'm not sure how well this is going to work since it could be in PAL. I think with a composite lead, though, it should be all right, but um, we're going to find out. So let's open it up really quick here. Yeah, and there's our basic unit. Looks like uh, we got a single, almost looks like an RF cable. And it could be RF, I'm not sure. You would like to think by the late 90s everything would be composite. But who knows with clone systems. So we've got... Uh, antenna cable. So this might be a problem. If this is in PAL and we can't get a, uh, a signal out of it, we're going to be SOL uh, because, uh, you know, we use a NTSC standard here rather than PAL, but um, we'll give it a shot. We'll see if we at least get something out of the uh, TV or the encoder uh, in terms of display just to make sure it works. Um, or maybe we'll get lucky and it'll, um, it'll run out as a composite lead or of some sort and um, we'll get to look at it. Um, so, okay, I'm going to wire it up, put some batteries in it. Uh, this goofy controller we got here. Whee! A big button, D-pad, three buttons here. Ooh, that's cheap. Cheap! Yeah. Um, and some of these other ones had, um, some of the more standalone units that were smaller had a uh, um, joystick ports, so you could actually connect the original Atari 2600 controllers. Not this one, though. Uh, Alright, we'll set it up, see what it looks like, and uh, we'll switch over to the video side. If I can't get any video out of it at all, let's just call it a day uh, right here and just say, hey, we couldn't get video out of it, but um, we'll keep this one for nostalgia anyway. Uh, you know, maybe one day I'll get a PAL TV and we can revisit it, but for now, let's give it a shot, see what happens. Thanks for watching. Let's see where, here we go. Okay, so we're looking at the uh, Super TV Boy. Uh, channel 34, uh, UHF, and that's how it kind of worked over there. It's in PAL, at least it's not flickering, but uh, as you can see, it's um, uh, completely uh, crazy. Looks like we can choose a game. Looks like it's Choplifter. The reason you don't see it in color is because um, PAL had a different color sequence um, 
then uh, NTSC. And so our NTSC doesn't understand the, the, the color co code combinations, etc. cetera. Um, if you're ever like bored and, and you're curious about why PAL is PAL and NTSC is NTSC, um, it, 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 it's really kind of an interesting thing because it, you know, um, PAL was driven by the fact basically that you know, over in uh, Europe, in England, etc., uh, they had um, 240 volt electricity, and in the United States we had, you know, 120. And uh, because the way the 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 generation, you know, it spun around, you know, the generator spun around 240 times a minute or whatever it is. Uh, and um, because of that, that's what they used for timing on their televisions. And so, you know, they had some sort of, uh, you know, with their rasters and, and the, the way they scan things. Um, from what I understand, it was, you know, some sort of division of that to give them the 50 hertz signal that they used um, but it also allowed them to have uh, slightly more um, lines of resolution. Whereas with NTSC, you have um, 60 hertz. So the picture was a little, you know, the refresh was a little bit faster. It was a little less flicker there. And you would have... Um, uh, little less lines of resolution. Now what can happen is what you're seeing here, and that, you know, is that the positioning will be off due to the due to the timing differences, as well as the color scheme uh, combination being different, color information. And, um, you know, you'll also end up with um, uh, usually um, a, a sort of a rolling horizontal or or it just sort of depends now because we're coming out of the VCR which is managing the signal as best it can as well as we're uh, somehow I managed to clear that board even though we're only at half a screen but rock on um, <laughs> and, and the fact that I'm driving it in through a in through an encoder uh, this, the screen is fairly stable even at half half screen so there's no vertical or horizontal hold on it I can't really fix that um, it's just a uh, uh, the way it is there's some kind of pac-man clone or something um, but anyway it looks like this unit does work and had I had a pal TV and a step up transformer to 240 volts to drive it I could maybe have it you know working all properly however then trying to get it for you guys so you could see what's going on uh, in the screen as well um, that might be a little bit you know more difficult because uh, I don't know trying to get it to go out of the um, uh, composite to the HDMI encoder um, or just you know to drive it back out as a regular signal these things don't seem to really want to play that nice. They, they do say they support PAL, but it's sort of, uh, it's an awkward thing because, you know, I'm not, my VCR is not PAL, so it's not driving out the correct color sequence, etc. And it just doesn't really come together for us here on the show. But again, the purpose of the show isn't really a retrospective. I'm sure you can find somebody that's got a super TV boy, and as well as we've looked at a lot of 2600 games, and we're not done yet. So um, purpose of this is to make sure it works. It does. So, uh, Super TV Boy, a little piece of video game history from 1997. Uh, clone system, you know, packed in 128 games from the Atari into a little uh, handheld type or, you know, a battery operated system. Kind of neat for the time. Would have been uh, PlayStation era. First PlayStation, Sega Saturn, some kid playing 2600 games at home. Weird. But uh, that's what was going on. All right, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video.